think there's a big rabbit hole waiting ahead of me right now. Um, I'm I'm basically about to explore more about the entanglement. So, of course, there's plenty of stuff that I could be doing, right? I mean, um, if you check out Twitter just today, Jack and uh, and Jack Cerrone and the how they call them um, uh, and Xanadu, they released um, uh, a new implementation of EQT. Uh, it's not a new implementation; it's a uh, a tutorial. Cool, and so. Uh, it's like I, I'm dying to do this because it's exactly uh, you know a, one of the big open projects that I have, falling in love with variational quantum algorithms and and all that stuff. But I think I think it's worth to wait a second, like to kind of wait 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 a minute. It's like I I, I thought you know it's I gotta understand I wanna understand entanglement better. I want to like most of the variational algorithms out there, um, they put like just entanglement in uh, just one form of entanglement in their ansatz and and they'll just be happy with it and I'm I feel like other than just a traditional bail bail pair and all this kind of stuff like that I, I that there's a bit more to, to entanglement um, that that might be worth exploring right and um, and so yeah because I'm I'm really considering to jump to these <laughs> i'm so much considering to jump to these right now but i don't want to it's like i'm i'm more like i want to close up topics but but uh, i really want to jump to this into this but I'll, I'll probably wait a little bit um and i want to so i want to try to understand a bit more entanglement because i think that this might help me um understand better variational algorithms basically um and um and so in Black Opal, they have this cool visualization of entanglement with a theta tetrahedron or th three tetrahedrons, um, which uh, I don't really understand. Uh, how is this supposed to work? Why is it so laggy? Uh, yeah, I want to clear the circuit. So if I put in say uh, a Hadamard and a control not right mm, and I play the circuit so this should show me like what's going on yeah and so you see so there's two things in here there's like a um so this little thing i think it indicates that it's uh that it's entangled um something is not really working well with chrome i think i don't know if i don't i shouldn't just uh close studio and this, maybe that's going to smoothen stuff out. I'm going to have a shitty machine. Um, and so this is telling you that this entanglement, I think, this bar tells you how strong the entanglement is, which is kind of max in this case because it's a bail pair. It's the maximum entangled state. Um, but I don't really know what those tetrahedras are supposed to represent. And I think I found... Uh, I think I have found a uh, a description. Wait a second, where did I find these? Was it in the tutorial materials? There's like a in, in their wiki. I think there's an explanation or something, or they're supposed to have something in there, in the learning center. I think my laptop is playing with me right now. This is just blocking incredibly. Okay, so those are the videos. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the wiki or something. Um, resources, documentation. I found it the other day and I just, uh, I just didn't wanna use the guides, application notes. Um, 
Because I don't know if I didn't find it in the Balder Opal documentation or in the notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what I found it in. I think it was at the very end. No. Justification. Uh, user guides, simulation position. Yeah, maybe no, maybe. I mean, why would it be in the Balder Opal? I think um, it should be in the uh, it should be in the Black Opal user guides because that's the product. Getting started. Uh, oh yeah, visualizing. Okay, cool. I think I think the I think this could be it. Oh yeah, awesome, perfect. So, po, 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 this I know. Okay, here we go. So, the um, to help you build intuition for entanglement, we've developed a succinct uh, visual framework in order to efficiently illustrate and animate the dynamic evolution of the state of entangled qubits. Technical details of, the, of this representation appear here. Awesome. And the blocks here is restricted to the single qubit control setting for two qubits. A pair of blocks here is, is, easily represents a separable, separable state, so an untangled state, but adding non-classical entanglement, believed to be a key resource in quantum computing, renders the blocks here as useless by themselves. We therefore add three tetrahedra, which capture the presence of correlations between the Cartesian X, Y, and Z projections. Okay, correlations between those, okay of the individual qubit states. The correlations indicate that one cannot describe the state of either qubit independently, only the joint state of both qubits. In this framework, maximally entangled Bell states are represented as states of at the extreme um, of the tetrahedra with block vectors shrinking to zero in the middle of the blocks here. Other states reside in the joint space of the correlation tetrahedra and the block spheres and are manipulated by quantum gates just like a block sphere. That's interesting. So it would be cool to see then how uh, so how the entanglement evolves based on, on, on particular gates. We also include a visual indicator of the presence of entanglement mathematically representing the con concurrence of the two qubit system. Oh, wait a second. So the correlations might not necessarily be entanglement. So for the two qubit system, um, in the above example, as soon as the entangling gates begin, this indicator becomes eliminated and represents the degree of entanglement between the two qubits. You can visualize the interaction of two qubit entanglements in the combo circuits using our new circuit editor tool. Just drag and drop controls into the circuit, set the input state for each qubit independently, and watch the system evolve in time. You'll even gain insights into some scenarios where applying entangling gates doesn't result in entanglement. What? Okay. Hmm. Mm, okay. Interesting. So, I guess... I guess... That means, so what does this mean here? The top is what? There's a correlation between the what? X, X, like, I, I, that's what I don't get. So this is sort of at the center. And, and this has actually done a bit of a journey, to be honest. So it's, um, So while it's going through the control node, it actually does something there as it gets entangled. Okay. But then it goes back. Okay, that's definitely interesting. Because I mean, like, what, what are the... So for example, can you ever create that state, right? Like, 
is there a way to reproduce that state, for example? And what does this what does this mean in terms of uh, what would be cool to see here the actual state vector? Um, but those so if I get it to run until the n, so at the n you get back, you get to that extreme, which kind of means that the z observables and the x observables are correlated. Is that what it means? That if you measure, but not the y ones, let me just give it a quick try, okay? So quirk, quirk. So it means that if I do this, then uh, let's take a look at the amplitudes. So there is entanglement in here for the z. That's the z observable. If I want to observe the x, then I've got to apply two Hartman gates, don't I? Oh, look at this. This is also entangled. But if I want to observe if I want to now measure on the, the y observable, then I should apply a NES gate both, right? That's still entangled though. I don't know. Visualizations, okay. The Z, because it's definitely not. Oh, maybe it's uh, that's definitely. So I don't know what the coordinates here really mean. Because there is there is a, a component of y y correlation if I can read this correctly. Like and there's a component of you know x x and z z. And there's a component of yeah. Okay, let's see if I can find something more in here. So two qubits. The block series representation, uh, we know these mapping component state transformation, this kind of rotation of block series here with state. Okay, so that's block sphere stuff, two qubits. Visualizing the dynamic evolution of entangled qubits represents a new challenge as correlations between the qubits cannot be simply represented using two block spheres. We represent a new geometric we present new geometric representation for entangled qubit pairs incorporating two block spheres and three correlation tetrahedra in order to completely describe the state of two entangled qubits. So is this like a thing? No, it doesn't look like. Um Separable block spheres, entanglement tetrahedra. To completely describe the observable, all observable correlations that can be produced by an arbitrary pure entangled state. Um, three entanglement tetrahedra are needed A, B, and C. So this is the. Okay, so I don't know what this means. The minus XA and XB. Minus y a y b. I don't know what this what this minus here means, but th this can be interpreted as three orthogonal arrangement between the axes of the two block spheres. The combination of the block sphere spheres and the entanglement tree are effectively just a way of representing all of the Pauli observables. 
It can be shown that the correlations of the, uh, correlations of the Pauli observables happen to be bound to the tetrahedra for a discussion of this geometric interpretation of correlations and how it relates to other measures of quantum correlations, namely maximal entanglement and discord. See here, wait a second, what did I just read? For a discussion of this geometric and correlations and how it relates to other measures of quantum correlations, namely maximal entanglement and discord. See uh, here, okay, so I'm gonna take a look at this. Um, because I think that sounds familiar. Wait a second, this is paid, right? Probably. Probably. What if I go to this? It seems like I clicked on it at a while. Okay. Oh, come on. Yeah, that was where. <laughs> Here, archive. One of the best signatures of non-classicality in a quantum system is the existence of correlations that have no classical counterpart, different methods for quantifying. This is something that is like, is it, it the fact that they don't have a classical counterpart, does it, is it because, for example, you correlate the measurements, but like each individual part seems to behave randomly? Is this what's not classically? Like I, I've gone through a bit of the Bell's theory, Bell's theorem thing, and the, the 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 whole thing with the proof, but I really can't remember that. So, um, different methods for quantifying the quantum and classical parts of correlations are amongst the more actively studied topics. So this is from twenty eleven, though this paper is it. Over the past decade, entanglement is the most prominent of these correlations. Okay, so there are many other correlations which are not entanglement. But in many cases, an unentangled states exhibit. But in many cases, unentangled states exhibit non-classical behavior too. Okay, so I didn't know. Thus, distinguishing quantum correlations other than entanglement provides a better division between the quantum and classical worlds, especially when considering mixed states. I should probably get something to drink. Here we review different notions of classical and quantum correlations quantified by quantum discord and other related measures. In the first half, we review the mathematical properties of the measures of quantum correlations relating to each other and discuss the classical quantum division that is common among them. And the second how should the measure identify and quantify the deviation from classically, classicality and various quantum information processing tasks. Uh, so the second half, it might not be so interesting for me, the measures identify and quantify the deviation from classic classicality in various quantum information processing tasks, quantum thermodynamics, open system and many body physics, we show that in many cases quantum correlations indicate an advantage of quantum methods over classical ones. Is that that big? Oh, 59 pages, that is a rabbit hole. Oh my god. Oh, nice. Okay, gotta get something to drink. Mm. Oh, here we got we go with some of those things. Geometric discord. Uh, the screen is so bright. Mm, okay, so this is done. This is done. Entanglement indicator is con. Concurrence um, as our entanglement indicator. It measures the degree of entanglement between two qubits and for pure states can be written explicitly as what is this? Two times. Oh, that's not, it says two times we measure, it's two times uh, the absolute value of measuring, I guess. 0, 0, and 1, 1 minus the probabilities of measuring 0, 1, 1, 0, right? Which is what you don't want to have. So if, if those are 0, then you get the, the max. If you measure all of them equally, then you get 0. Okay, but it's interesting because if you measure 
nothing here as well and, and a lot of zero ones and one zeros that made, that that also gives you a um, a high value so that also means entanglement okay that's um this is concurrence as our entanglement indicator okay but this is sort of a general way of measuring that concurrence is zero for separable states only and is uh, one for maximally entangled states why <laughs> oh because it's it's one because it's going to be a half no there's a two in here so how would this be one only if this whole thing would be like a half Also, display the w whether a state is entangled or not. That is simply a test for whether the concurrence is non-zero. Okay, cool. Okay, but I guess I, I guess we've got a lot of reading material here. Um, it's going to be impossible to cover all these in a session, man. Okay, some circuits, interesting. Hmm. Entanglement activation. Okay, that can be a fun read, though. I mean, if it's linked in the Q control page. It can be, it can be a bad read. Okay. Well, we'll I guess we'll get going. Let me just, I'll just pause this for a second. You shouldn't notice anything. I'm just gonna get, uh, gonna grab something to drink, and I'm gonna be reading out loud, I guess. So, um, I mean, it's probably boring to watch me read, but um, you can put this in your, you know, in the background if you you're doing the dishes or something, or you're driving home. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it can be an interesting. So we have different measures for quantum correlation. Okay, so quantum discord, quantum deficit. Oh, that's those are new concepts. I like when there's new concepts. Unification of different measures. Let's see if we can get down with the, at least the introduction or the first, the point tool. No, introduction is a separate point, okay. There's a unification of different measures. Quantum correlations in quantum information. Oh, in quantum algorithms, that's nice. Interpretation of quantum correlations, that's probably the more fluffy stuff. Ein selection, Maxwell's demon, super selection, non locality without entanglement. Mm, but it's definitely interesting. I, I, I definitely want to read through the entire thing, I think. Um, but I'll do this in different settings, I guess. It's going to be too much otherwise. Um, just some more reading sessions. Cool. Let me just pause this for a second. I'm going to get something to drink and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we're back. Hopefully the microphone is not spoiled and everything is still hearable. <laughs> okay, let's stick into these. Um, let's go through the introduction. In the early days of quantum information, entanglement was viewed as the main feature that gives quantum computers an advantage over their classical counterparts, superpositions without entanglement were seen as insufficient, especially given the fact that the concept, concept of superposition exists in the classical physics of waves, as it does in the classical theory of electromagnetism, for instance. The view that entanglement is crucial is also supported by foundational considerations for it, for it is known that Bell's inequalities cannot be violated by either classical or quantum superpositions and require genuine and, uh, entanglement to exceed the classically determined limit of correlation for correlations. Schrodinger, 1935. Is this paper available? Oh, that's going just to the... Oh, okay, I'll check it out later. I don't want to jump to the notes, the references. Um, cap, so, uh, captured all, Schrodinger, 1935, captured all these in his highly influential cat paper. <laughs> saying entanglement is not just one of many traits, but the characteristic trait of quantum physics. However, this straightforward and simple view about the efficiency of quantum information processing changed dramatically about 10 years ago when several developments took place. First, uh, Knil and Laflamme um, showed that quantum computation in which only one qubit is not in a maximally mixed state while the rest are, can achieve an exponential improvement in efficiency over classical computers for a limited set of tasks. This started uh, to throw doubt on doubt and entanglement being responsible for all the quantum speedups. 
since the computer register which is so mixed as to have only one non-maximally mixed qubit is unlikely to be unlikely to be entangled. The Neil Laflamme model is experimentally motivated by liquid state nucle nuclear magnetic resonance uh, information processing at room temperature and is therefore important for resolving the question of whether NMR can provide a genuine implementation of quantum computer. Another development came in 2001 while analyzing different measures of information in quantum theory. Henderson and Vedral, Olivier and uh, Zurich, Zurich concluded that entanglement does not account for all non-classical correlations and that even separable states usually contain correlations that are not entirely classical. Okay, that is interesting. These correlations are aptly named quantum discord. First time I hear about quantum discord. Is this still a thing or is it like the paper? <laughs> it almost looks like the, the quantum edition dojo logo. <laughs> In quantum information theory, quantum discord is a measure of non-classical correlations between two subsystems. It includes correlations that are due to quantum physical effects, but do not necessarily involve quantum entanglement. A notion of quantum discord was introduced by blah blah blah. From the it follows that quantum correlations can be present in certain mixed separable states. In other words, separability alone does not imply the absence of quantum correlations. The notion of quantum discord thus goes beyond the distinction which we had. Okay. So there's uh, any expert. Discord can also be viewed in operational terms as entanglement consumption in an extended quantum state merging protocol, providing evidence for non-entanglement quantum correlations normally involves elaborate quantum tomography methods. However, in 2011, such correlations could be demonstrated experimentally in a room temperature nuclear magnetic resonance system using chloroform molecules that represent a two qubit quantum system. Okay, but is, are those things then also in IBM's computers or? It's been seen as a possible basis for the performance in terms of quantum computation described as mixed states quantum systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. The view that quantum discord can be a resource for quantum processes was further cemented in 2012. Uh, experiments, okay. I'll go back to the paper. Um, um, discord, okay. Soon after its inception, Laflamme gave an intuitive argument that quantum discord may be connected to the performance of certain quantum computers. In a seminal paper, uh, data et al. 2008 put this on a firm quantitative basis. They calculated this core in the Neil Laflamme algorithm and showed that it scales with the quantum efficiency, unlike entanglement, which remains vanishingly small throughout the computation. This triggered the flurry of activity in applying this core to many different protocols and problems in quantum information. I've never heard of these. What is the Neil Laflamme algorithm? I can't believe that they're still on the power of one bit of quantum information. KLM protocol. Ah, that's the KLM protocol then maybe? Is this the... There's nothing about Discord in here. I'm sorry if the Windows uh, sound just left you deaf for a second. Uh, or maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't pick it up, I don't know. And showed that it scales um, within the quantum efficiency, unlike what is within the quantum efficiency, though? This triggered the flurry of activity in, da, 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 in applying this core to many different protocols. About the same time, another form of quantum correlations different from entanglement emerged in an information theoretic approach to thermodynamics. Showed that the advantage of using non local operation to, to extract showed that the advantage of using non-local operation to extract work from a correlated system coupled to a heat bath is related to entanglement only in the case of pure states. Yeah. In the general case, the advantage is related to more general forms of quantum correlations. This work was followed by a series of results, which we review in sections 2b and uh, this is well, 5, 7b, other results linking discord to various areas of physics motivation for interest in quantum discord. Mm. 
while Zurich's main interest was the coherence, Rodriguez Rosario linked Discord to open system dynamics and their description via dynamical maps. At the same time, da -da -da, Dylan Schneider studied the relationship between Discord and quantum phase transitions, opening the way for further studies on Discord in many body systems. Nowadays, there are many ways of understanding the gap in correlations. That is to say, the fact that classical correlations and entanglement do not exhaust all possible correlations in quantum systems. The widely used measures of quantum correlations are quantum discord, quantum deficit, measurement-induced disturbance, and relative entropy of discord. In the first half of this review, we introduced these different measures and showed the fundamental differences and similarities between them. In the second half of the review, we identify and discuss the major directions of research that make use of measures of quantum correlations. Um, okay. I'd be interested to know how is this applied to algorithms, to be honest. Um, different measures of quantum correlations. That's point number two. Don't keep an eye on the time so I don't get the video too long. Um, so there is, okay, so let me just see, can I can I quickly skip to quantum algorithms? That was what page? Just see. Mm. Mm. Deterministic quantum computation with one qubit metrology. The role of correlations in other algorithms, one way quantum computation. Metrology. Let's not analyze the correlations in noisy implementation of one way. Quantum computation is now mostly standard. Metrology, apart from its role in speeding up computation, correlations play a role in improving the precision of some measurements. Oh, could Does this maybe have anything to do with the recent work that was published by Zapata Computing? What was that? Zapata Juice or something like this? Zapata, Ju <laughs> Zapata Computing Juice. Computing. Uh, at least this is the tweet, probably, because there was a it was a paper. Is it these? Mm -hmm. It's a padded juice. Can I just write computing properly? For once, oh my god, no. Can this search work somehow good? No. Do I have to scroll through the palace tweets? I don't want to scroll through the palace tweets. Oh, actually, it's here. <laughs> uh, Engineer likelihood functions. Is this these? I think it's these. Anyway, but maybe it's not related to this approach. Um, the precision of some measurements. Again, for pure states, the necessity of entanglement is well understood. Since the optimal strategy is always involved entanglement, 
Other forms of correlations only come into play in the presence of noise. This is closer to the realistic... Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Let's just go slow. Scenario, but far from the optimal scenario. The results regarding this court in quantum metrology protocols with Noisy states are quite surprising and especially relevant in, in light of experimental constraints. In this respect, it is most appropriate to compare the quantum strategy to other strategies in the same amount of noise. Um, the qubit undergoes the, the following unitary evolution from 0 to the 0 plus 1 state, and then uh, there is a phase shift. With some unknown phase, um, and then we would like to get the best estimate for this phase using a large but limited number n of probe states. We can estimate the phase by measuring the output state and the precision increases with the number of states. Uh, mm. We can estimate the phase by measuring the output state and the precision increases with the number of states as 1 divided by the square root of n. This limit comes from the central limit theorem and is usually referred to as the shot noise or standard quantum limit. However, this limit can be broken using quantum effects such as entanglement, giving a new limit to the precision which increases to 1 divided by n. That's called the Heisenberg limit, quantum enhancement. Mm, I don't know. Um, hmm. so for, uh, compare four different strategies for estimating uh, pure states and the input mixed states of the form. Mm -hmm. I don't know, standard, classical, what is this? Quantum one. There's some figures. Metrology with noisy states. Four protocols for estimating the phase phi. All input qubits are the same of the same form. Mm, the standard protocol S, where the probes are independent, the classically correlated protocol. Mm. So this is saying that if you, if you, uh, if you entangle, if you entangle the qubit, and you apply the same thing with the same phase that improves the estimation or the accuracy you can get with the phase. Interesting. Why would that work though? I mean, that's something that I, so why, why would that work? Clear all, so if I just have like a apply a phase of Say S, right, and then how mark gates. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be getting like 50%. So I know that that if applied like an S, right. Now if I entangle, if I entangle, entangle it this way. Let's say I'm gonna try the Q one. So. I entangle like this. I apply a NAS gate here as well. Then I disentangle. Hmm. Hmm. But now it's measuring one. Because. Wait a second, what did just happen? 
these happen. Uh, but it's a different protocol, right? It's a different. So if I would say, for example, I want to measure the phase applied by the Z gate, so all of the phase applied by the T gate. So now it's like it requires 50 50 percent of B. Whereas if I don't do these. They need at least 14.6%, so you need to be more precision against to get that exactly. This is because we're entangling these states, and so when we apply the, fa the this gate to both qubits, they only. Okay, so it applies, you're applying the phase twice. You apply, it, it, the effect is you're having. You're having the um, you're having the operation applied twice. The the phase effect is double in here on the one one component of your entangled state, and then when you do a when you um, you know kind of disentangle the thing, then you end up with this, and so it's easier. Okay, you get rid of uh, at least. I don't know, how would you prove that this requires less? Yeah, I don't know, interesting. Um, I never thought of these this way. The quantum protocols Q1 and Q2 for which the Hadamard on the control qubit followed by synchronous is the probe states. The quantum protocol Q2 is most efficient um, given quadratic enhancement over S even past the point where entanglement vanishes. It is also the only protocol which remains significantly discordant in the high noise limit. The secrets reproduce from, okay, so Q2, now that's something else, what? So Q2 is the same, but like the, there's another entangled state, like there's another control node in here, but for these two, somehow makes sense I, you need to kind of start with maybe you know that but it's also not helpful sorry that so then, then it's 75 percent i still entangled me so there's still Entanglement here. Think so. No. Incoherent, incoherent. So they're still entangled. It's first here where I know they're still entangled. The thing is still entangled. Okay. How would that be more efficient in estimating these phase? I don't know, I guess we'll get this. Probably I shouldn't have uh, jammed so quickly. But I start to understand a bit more what is uh, what is this chord and stuff. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is definitely a rabbit hole. <laughs> um, Okay, let's see. Different measures of quantum correlations. Quantum systems can be correlated in ways inaccessible to classical objects. And the existence of non-classical correlations in a system can be seen as a signature that subsystems are genuinely quantum. Various notions of classicality exist and give rise to the hierarchy of states and correlations considered to be genuinely quantum. It is not our aim to discuss all notions of classicality present in the literature. Rather, we we, we, we discuss, no, we focus on some of those directly related to correlations. For example, one may, one may regard as classical the local realistic worldview put forward in the famous Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen paper um, using mod, modern language. This is the world in which the results of experiments can be calculated by local algorithms supplied by data, with data transmitted no faster than the speed of light. Bell showed that correlations between outcomes of such local Programs are bounded, 
and there exist entangled quantum states with correlations violating this bound. Interestingly, um, Werner proved that there are entangled quantum states that generate outcomes perfectly in agreement with local realistic views. Therefore, according to local realism, even correlations generated by some entangled states are classical. Clearly, one can object to the notion that local realism and is all there is uh, realism is all there is to the classical world. A set of states admitting a local realistic model is reduced to another number. One may regard as classical those states which can be prepared with the help of local operations and classical communication. Mm -hmm. According to this notion, the set of classical states is exactly the set of separable non-entangled quantum states. In quantum correlations, correlations. However, however, one may object to this notion of classicality to having in mind the nature of operations allowed in the framework of LOCC. I, I just don't know what I'm reading, for example. For example, local operations here allow for the preparation of indistinguishable pure quantum states, um, whereas it is impossible to prepare pure indistinguishable states of a classical bead, a classical bead about which we have full knowledge in a pure state can either be in a zero or a state one, and one of two fully distinguish distinguishable states. Uh, this is the spirit of the, pres of the present section in which certain notions and measures of classicality are discussed. Okay. Quantum discord. The notion of classicality related to quantum discord revolves around information theory. Two systems are correlated if, if together they contain more information than taken separately. If we measure the lack of information by entropy, this definition of correlations is captured by the mutual information. Where Sx is the Shannon entropy, if x is a classical variable with values x occurring with probability px, or sx is the von, the von Neumann, uh, Neumann, uh, Neumann, whatever, entropy sx. Uh, okay. For classical variables, uh, Bayes' rules defines a conditional probability as uh, pxy, it's pxy divided by py. This implies an equivalent form of the classical mutual information where the condition entropy is the average of entropies. The classical correlations can therefore be interpreted as information gained about one subsystem as a result of a measurement on the other. Classical correlations can therefore be interpreted as information gained about one subsystem not entirely sure I understand what this means. In contradiction to the classical case, in the quantum analog, there are many different measurements that can be performed on a system, and measurements generally disturb the quantum state. A measurement on subsystem A is described by a positive operator valued measure, POVM, with elements where M is the measurement operator and A is the classical outcome. Mm. The initial state is transformed at the measurement. Okay, this is getting complicated. Where party A observes outcome A with probability PA, and B has the conditional state. This allows us to define a classical quantum version of a conditional entropy and introduce classical correlations of the state. Blah blah blah. To quantify the classical correlations in the state independently of the measurement, it's maximized overall measurements. Which involves only fully distinguishable states for A and some indistinguishable states for B. I have no idea what I'm reading. And uh, or quantum classical QC when one exchanges the role of A and B. Quantum classical. Mm. The quantum discord of a state under a measurement is defined as a difference between total correlations as given by <clears throat> the quantum mutual information in equation one and the classical correlations. 
Okay, so the discord is a measure of how much quantum correlations there is in comparison to classical ones. But I still don't really understand the difference between classical correlation and a quantum correlation in this case. Or how is this? Okay, there's about a, a bunch of technicalities in here that I don't understand. Um, properties of discord. Quantum discord has the following properties. It is not symmetric. In general, dBA doesn't equal dAB. Uh, I guess it's B if A and A if B or B given A or something like this, which may be expected because conditional entropy is not symmetric. It's going to be interpreted in terms of probability of confusing certain quantum states. The score is non-negative. The score is invariant on the local unitary transform. The score, the score is invariant on the local unitary transformations. It is the same for state row A, B, and the state Okay, so this core, the discord doesn't change by applying single qubit unitary operations. This follows from the fact that this court is defined by entropies and the value obtained for measurements. This court is not contractive under general local operations. Thermal discord. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, measurement dependent discords. Okay, quantum deficit. What is quantum deficit? So this chord, I roughly have an idea, but I don't really understand how it is defined exactly. Quantum deficit, this measure of quantum correlations originates in questions regarding work extraction from quantum systems coupled to a heat bath. Trying to find, let me read quickly, just skin this. Okay, amount of work. This goes too much into quantum mechanics for my taste at the moment. But it, I guess it's yeah, somewhat important. Um, or, I don't know, the resulting subclass is called closed log. I don't know, what is this? Zero-way deficit, one-way deficit, two-way deficit. Mm. There are zero ways, one way, two, 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 two. what is this? Did I Google quantum discord? Yeah, and then, and what was the other one? Uh, quantum. Um, properties of this court deficit. No, it seems to be mentioned in here. In quantum function theory, quantum discord is a measure of non-classical correlations between two subsystems of a quantum system. It includes correlations that are due to quantum physical effects, but do not necessarily involve quantum entanglement. The notion of quantum discord was introduced, blah, 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 blah. 
a measure of quantumness of correlations. From the work of these two research groups, it follows that quantum correlations can be present in certain unique separable states. In other words, separability alone does not imply the absence of quantum correlations. The notion of quantum discord thus goes beyond the notion of quantum scope was beyond the distinction which had been made earlier between entangled versus separable quantum states. In mathematical terms, quantum discord is defined in terms of the quantum mutual information. More specifically, quantum discord is the difference between two expressions which each in the classical limit represent a mutual information. Information entropy and the joint entropy, the conditional entropy, Quantum discord, which is asymmetrical non zero quantum discord indicates the presence of correlations that are due to non commutativity of quantum operators. For pure states, the quantum discord becomes a measure of quantum entanglement. For pure states, the quantum discord becomes a measure of quantum entanglement. Okay. More specifically, in that case, it equals the entropy of entanglement. Mm. This core can also be viewed in version as entanglement consumption in extended quantum state merging protocol. Quantum discord is in some ways different from quantum entanglement. Quantum discord is more resilient to dissipative environments than is quantum entanglement. This has been shown for Markovian environments as well as for non-Markovian environments. Quantum discord. What if I just search, I don't know, IBM? On this chord. Is there something there? Steering and Discord and IBM quantum computer. Okay, so there is actually something done on an IBM machine with Discord. What is these? Bell diagonal and Werner state generation entanglement, non locality steering, and Discord on the IBM quantum computer. Should probably save these. Mm, mm, mm. It's a beast. I mean, okay, so we've got quantum discord and quantum deficit, which we don't understand. Uh, symmetric discord, relative entropy, geometric measures. Okay, maybe this is where the tetrahedra comes from. Yay! I know that's a bit fancier than a tetrahedra, though. That's an octahedron. A tetrahedra, or a tetrahedron. Tetrahedra is a plural, sorry. Geometric discord. Bell diagonal states. The set of two qubit states with maximally mixed marginals, the so-called bell diagonal states on the axis, we plot T11, T22. Um, and T33. Continuous variable discord. Generalized measurement. This is insanely technical. Demons and goblins in the same page. <laughs> Can I just go back to the beginning? So what do we check? Um, measurements in geometric measures, continuous variable score, challenge measurements, unification. Of that's definitely 
I I I don't think that I can go through all these without really kind of looking around a bit more in terms of discord and deficit. Okay. Okay, for correlations. On Discord, page twenty-four. This is just seems like the mathematical definition. I want to I want to see something a bit more um, sort of a good example on the, with a circuit or something. Something that tells me. Um, What's the discord of, or how to create maybe, co how can you create correlations that are like non entangling, for example, in a circuit? And how are they useful if they are useful? Quantum correlations and quantum information. Maybe that's where I should start. Non local broadcasting. Discord is discord weakness, classical states. Maybe that's where I should start next time. I'll kind of skip all the <laughs> all the technical definitions now. What the role, what role it plays in information theoretic tasks? There are several major examples of how quantum correlations play a role in quantum com communication tasks. Here's the role. Here the role. Here its role comes in different gui uh, guises as a condition for a no-go theorem, a resource for locking off classical correlations, determining entanglement consumption and creation, and differences in coding capacities. What this shows is that the role of quantum correlations is not singular but rather varied. This hints at the fundamental nature of quantum correlations of mixed states, very much like entanglement for pure states. We begin with an important no-go theorem, which generalizes the celebrated no-cloning theorem. No local broadcasting. Unilocal and probabilistic broadcasting. Local broadcasting. What is local broadcasting? Discord and Helen closely as they both measure quantum correlations. Here we show explicit links between several different discords and entanglement and entanglement. Uh, in this subsection we use the results of okay. Some kind of teleportation. Hmm. We propose the first correct special purpose. So we propose the first correct special, and this is from May 2020, purpose quantum circuits for preparation of bell diagonal states, BDS, and implemented them implemented in the IBM quantum computer, characterizing the testing complex aspects of the quantum correlations in the full parameter space. Among the circuits proposed, one involves only two quantum bits, but requires adaptive quantum tomography routines handling classical bits in parallel. The entire class of bell diagonal states is generated, and a number of characteristic indicators and internal information, CHSH, and then these cores are experimentally evaluated over the full parameter space and compared with theory. Mm. As a byproduct of this work, we also find a remarkable general inequality between quantum discord and asymmetric relative entropy of discord. Yeah, that's too much. Okay, the former never exceeds the later. Uh, the latter. Uh, we also proved that for all BDS, Bell diagonal and uh, Werner states. Okay. The octahedron of separable states.
quantum circuits for PDS and, and vernier states. Inadequate two parameter version. Compact three parameter version. Three parameter version based on canonical coordinates. Mm. In this section, we propose quantum circuits with outputs generate uh, output states covering the whole tetrahedron of BDS. We propose various circuits using uh, four qubits as well as two qubits and discuss their relationship with various parameterizations. Specialized circuits for Werner states are also considered. What are Werner states? So those are supposed to be different entangled. A Werner state is a d times d dimensional bipartite quantum state density matrix that is invariant, and they're all unitary operations of the form uu. That is, it is a bipartite bipartite quantum state that satisfies. Okay, is a state that is, is a state that doesn't change. Okay, that's interesting. It's a state that doesn't change when applying any one qubit or unit trace or something like that. Mm. Okay. Okay, so here we, we have some circuits, two qubit circuits. So these actually might be more interesting. Four qubit circuit oyster measurement is entangled as in common with the environment. Oh, measurement as entanglement with the environment. So you pretend that one qubit is the environment, maybe, and then you just entangle it, and then, you know, here you go, and you have measurement, or what? It's like, I don't know, it feels just really big. I don't know where to start. I mean, it's um, um, it's probably too long of a video already. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to stop here. Um, so I'm far from fully understanding these, but it seems like it's something that I definitely want to dig into a little bit more. I got to let this sink a little bit. So I got to let this, um, you know, kind of, I'm going to sleep on it. And then it's a quantum discord, quantum deficit, and uh, something about like, um, I, I don't know how to represent. So this visualization is supposed to represent the different correlations. And that's what I wanted to understand in the first place. Not these, but these. Not these, but these, exactly. Okay. So it's supposed to show the different, the different correlations between, between the axes. Which ones they agree and disagree and and, and whatnot. Um, you get insights into some scenarios where applying entangling gates doesn't result in entanglement. That's interesting. So I'll definitely like to understand more. What does it mean? Gates where you apply entangling states, applying entangling gates doesn't result in entanglement. Is it going to change this circuit in here or was it, what is it doing? So, Sorry. 
So there's a next gate in here, and then there's a next gate in here. I don't know if the spaces are on purpose. Then two hard mines, and then Let's zoom out a bit. So now there is entanglement. So that's not the example. Nothing happens then. Now look at this. So wait a second. So the X gate does change the correlations in here. Interesting. Because, like, doing doing this here, it wouldn't show. No, yeah, it does change. Okay, sure, of course, it does change, and this brings it back. Okay, so that changes the correlation, so you can see this here. That changes it back. It's funny to see that the Hadamard gates do have an effect similar to the Hadamard, but on the at the correlation level, right? So, and then that disentangles it. Okay. This, um, uh, it's definitely a lot a lot to understand. <laughs> it's definitely a lot to understand here. What is it happening? Ah, I can't turn uh, this where I want to do. No. It's still difficult to visualize, but it's uh, that's definitely a rabbit hole. I gotta find the hold off. It's something to be more concrete if I don't want to get lost. But we've got some circuits to create entanglement stuff. I don't know. I'll let it I'll let it uh, I'll let it I need to sleep on it, okay? I need to sleep on it. But it's um, it's an interesting area. I, I definitely want to understand more about, about entanglement, and I want to be able to understand how these, for example, impacts the variational variational algorithms, right? Like, and and when you create like an ansatz and stuff like that, that that's that seems to be something. Anyway, interesting. I hope you enjoyed the um, reading session, the long reading session, um, and stay tuned for more content. Yeah, more stuff coming up soon. Bye bye.